The legacy of cowboys can best be summarized through one simple descriptor, the heartbeat of the Old West. Cowboys and cowboy culture has largely dominated the conversation surrounding the Wild West and the world's lasting obsession with all things Western frontier. Thanks to the former soldier turned showman William Cody, or better known as Buffalo Bill, the minds of everyone were filled with dramatic representations of life out West, centering on the exploits of cowboys. The depiction worked so effortlessly as cowboys defined so much of what is now known as the American life, at least as it stood in the late 19th century before spilling into the modern age of US history. Cowboys lived lives defined by hard work, community, agriculture, commerce, and maybe a sprinkle of danger thrown in, depending on where and when you were leading the life as a wrangler. To explore more about the historical context of cowboys and the men and women who represented these icons, here's the next video in a series of essays focusing on specific cowhands who symbolized the profession's significance to the story of the United States of America. Next up is the legend of William M. Pickett, also known as the Dusky Demon, and the greatest bulldogging cowboy in all of the West. The roots of William Pickett's life began in a small freedom colony, often referred to as the Miller Community, officially registered with the state as Jenks Branch, Texas. Jenks Branch was founded by a former enslaved man named Milas Miller, who purchased 400 acres of land located close to the Jenks Branch Creek. Over time, more and more black Americans flocked to Williamson County of Central Texas, and before long, over 1,100 acres made up the Miller community, as did a church, schoolhouse, and two cemeteries. One of the burgeoning landowners to take advantage of the Lone Star migration was another formerly enslaved man by the name of Thomas Jefferson Pickett. Thomas Pickett arrived with his wife, Mary Janie Gilbert, and the couple laid down their roots just as they started bringing their family to life. Altogether, Thomas and Janie Pickett gave birth to 13 children, including five boys and eight girls. The second child born was a baby boy they named William M. Pickett, arriving on December 5, 1870, in their little home on the Travis County line. For his first 15 years of life, Pickett split his time between school and farm work, lending a hand to the family ranch when he wasn't at the schoolhouse, learning arithmetic and literature. His classical education would only last until he completed the fifth grade, though, before he officially dedicated a majority of his time to the fields and livestock. Henceforth, Pickett spent his days learning the trade of a ranch hand and set his sights on becoming a fully fledged cowboy. Sometime around his 16th birthday, Pickett specifically started watching the way horses, longhorn cattle, and dogs all lived simultaneously on the ranches around the Jenks Branch and beyond. You see, the land surrounding the Miller community in Williamson County was rife with a thick brush, bracken and scrub covering the plains. It was Mother Nature's snare, and more than a few cattle found themselves tangled up amongst the underwood. As a result, cowpunchers and ranch hands alike gave up their lassos as swinging rope through the brush to corral wandering cattle was merely an act of futility. Instead, local farms utilized herding dogs to push stock from the scrub and back onto the appropriate property. Pickett watched these cattle dogs above all else on the ranch, learning the vital differences between heel dogs and catch dogs. Heel dogs went after a cattle's hooves or heels, harassing their backsides to encourage forward movement. Catch dogs aimed for the other end, going after their heads in attempts to corral the wayward stock. On one such excursion, studying a cattle ranch, Pickett watched a few catch dogs subdue a massive steer by biting down on their upper lip. While he was in awe just like the other spectators, Pickett went a step further and said to himself he could do the same thing and achieve the same effect. Not long after, Pickett was not only attempting, but also mastering the art of bulldogging. First, the burgeoning cowboy would ride his horse as fast as he could and spring from the saddle when catching up to the cattle. Then, he'd grab the stubborn steer by the horns, twist its head upwards, bite the tender end of its nose or lip 
before wrangling it to the ground by falling backwards, using the steer as leverage. Eventually, fellow ranch hands and cowpunchers from around Williamson County bore witness to the legendary feat, forever known as being first accomplished by Bill Pickett. To this day, it's unknown if his inaugural presentation occurred in a holding pen or on a neighboring ranch or out in the scrubland, but wherever it was, it wouldn't soon be forgotten. As Pickett came into his own as both a cowboy and adulthood at large, the growing Pickett family moved off the Travis County line and into Taylor, Texas in 1888. At this point, Pickett had finally come of age and knew it was time to make his mark outside of the family farm. He and his brothers decided to capitalize on their various cowpoke abilities, opening up their own business called Pickett Brothers Bronco Busters and Rough Riders Association. The association was meant to help yearning cowboys and horse whisperers learn the ways of horse breaking, as was a common objective by many young folk in 19th century Texas. Historians believe the picket business made the five brothers the first black entrepreneurs in all of their region of the Lone Star State. A couple of years later, Pickett met and married the love of his life, a woman named Maggie Turner. Turner was a formerly enslaved woman and the daughter of the former plantation owner in which she resided. The pair's wedding came in 1890, located at the Baptist Church in Taylor, Texas. Pickett had become ordained as a deacon within the Baptist ministry, and the church proudly provided services to the couple who would eventually bear nine children themselves. Between raising his family and perfecting his cowboy craft on the range, Pickett also joined the National Guard as a young adult. However, the details of his service are relatively unknown. As the calendar flipped tenfold and the 20th century came underway, Pickett's career as a showman blossomed before his eyes. By 1900, he had become known all throughout the Lone Star State and the Western Frontier beyond as the expert bulldogger. Pickett started performing at local fairs and rodeos sponsored by Old West enthusiasts to showcase these exploits. In 1904, he made his first big splash at the Cheyenne Frontier Days, one of the finest rodeo presentations in all the United States. It was here a new audience got to experience the thrill of the bulldogging spectacle with their very own eyes. The bulldog fad didn't last forever, however, as its prevalence at modern rodeos transitioned to more steer wrestling events as it's popularly seen in today's time. Nevertheless, Pickett churned through the county fair and expo machine. One such stop bolstered his legacy with a noteworthy performance at a 1905 rodeo, held at the legendary 101 Ranch Wild West Show near present-day Ponca City, Oklahoma. Pickett was scouted by the 101's three owners and operators, three brothers named Joseph, George Jr., and Zach Miller. They had recently taken over the ranch from their father, Colonel George Miller Sr., who built the entertainment ranch in 1892. The 101 Ranch was famous for its increasingly popular lineup of performers, a list that includes the likes of Will Rogers, Beho Gray, the Mulhall siblings, Zach and Lucille, and none other than Buffalo Bill Cody himself. It was here Pickett continued dominating the industry with a signature move, a new signature nickname, the Dusky Demon. It's unknown who exactly bestowed the creative moniker, but Pickett embraced it as his new identity and never shied away from spawning the Dusky Demon wherever his services were requested. Over the course of two years, the 101 Ranch slowly but surely became the new home of Bill Pickett and his keep. In 1907, he moved to Oklahoma, which would later be admitted to the Union later that year. For much of the remainder of Pickett's life, he called the 101 Ranch his home. He was employed as a cowboy by day and as an entertainer by night. For his daytime work, Pickett would help rebuild fences, construct corrals for the stock, and gentled horses when he wasn't busy breaking them. On special occasions, the Wild West Show component to the 101 would traverse all around the world to showcase their frontier spectacle. This included much of the US, but also touched upon locales around Canada, Mexico, Europe, and South America. When he did attend the tours outside of his home network, 
Pickett would often choose not to reveal his true ethnicity. He was considered part Cherokee, but it was his identity as a black man that would have kept him from taking part in various Wild West reenactments, depending on the location's laws. To combat any additional racism, he was known to declare himself as Comanche in order to secure a spot on the tour. Due to Pickett's lack of inclusion in all the rodeos he could have participated in, it's often thought his record would have been significantly more impressive overall had black folk been allowed more often than disqualified. If he wasn't wrangling steer at a rodeo, Pickett could also be found in front of the camera on a movie set, lending his star power to the silver screen. Notable film credits include The Crimson Skull and The Bulldogger, a silent double feature directed by Richard Norman that has since been lost. As the Rolling Twenties came to a close, so did Bill Pickett's career. The first black cowboy superstar was beyond his prime, and his dedication as a showman started to decline. However, that didn't stop one famous piece of writing from being published in October of 1931, detailing the pure awe and strength of an aging dusky demon. The article reads as follows. The steer plunged into the arena. Pickett's horse plunged full speed after it, and he leaped from the saddle. He turned a complete somersault along the length of the steer's back, flying out and down over the curved horns, to fasten his teeth in the side of the steer's mouth. With sheer strength, he dragged the running behemoth's head to the tan bark, thrust its horn into the ground, and its forward momentum threw the steer hawks over horns in a somersault of its own. Around the time of the publication, Bill Pickett hung up his saddle and spurs for good, at least in a professional sense. He retired as a showman, waving goodbye to the Wild West reenactment life as the Great Depression toiled away much of the country. Despite that, however, Pickett still remained active on his family farm near Ponca City, Oklahoma. And as fate would have it, it was tending to the horses on his own ranch that would claim the Dusky Demon's life. In early 1932, Pickett was tending to one of the corrals when a bucking bronco kicked too close to the cowboy and struck him upside the head. He entered a coma, and despite doctors' best efforts, he didn't wake up. On April 2nd, he died as a result of the traumatic injury and was buried on the 101 Ranch in the days following. As of today, Pickett's gravesite is still located on the legendary landmark, right next to a statue commemorating the camaraderie between the Miller brothers and the Ponca tribal chief White Eagle, also referred to as the White Eagle Monument. Even as his body gave way, the fear Bill Pickett struck in the steers he seized is immortalized in history and his dominance on the range won't soon be forgotten. In the modern age, Pickett is remembered across the entire American West. In the 1970s and 80s, he was introduced into various halls of fame, including the Rodeo Hall of Fame, sponsored by the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. In 2017, a statue commemorating Bill Pickett was erected in Taylor, Texas, right at the intersection of 2nd Street and Main. Even without the physical mementos and countless Hall of Fame inductions, the true grit and glory of the Dusky Demon and the legend of Bill Pickett will last into infinity, as will all the stories he shared with the timeless nature of the Old West. <laughs>